Okay, so welcome everybody to today's uh, Next Level session. Uh, we have a guest today, as I was just telling everybody in the waiting room. Uh, the guest is my good friend, Kevin Saberin. Um, Kevin is not in real estate, as I was just saying. Kevin, you have been, uh, you're, you've been in sales mostly, right? You want to talk a little bit about your experience in the industry you've worked in for the most part? Yeah, absolutely, Ryan. Thank you. And uh, thanks for having me, everybody. I appreciate being here. I've, I've been in sales for like 30 years. I'm 51 years old. And I think pretty much right out of college, I jumped in and started selling things, everything from construction products like brick paving stone and concrete retaining walls, which to led me to landscape, which led me to equipment, spent some time with some manufacturers uh, on a regional and national scale selling equipment and parlayed that into a digital footprint where I started selling used equipment online, which is really around the time that Ryan and I met. And I started learning uh, the importance and significance of a, of a properly polished digital footprint. So not just websites, but social streams and feeds and things of that nature. And I mean, case in point, what I'm trying to do here is I view LinkedIn as a channel where I brand myself. So you'll notice I, I've got the handle technology entrepreneur, largely because I have two or three different digital activities going on right now. So I want that to roll up into something that makes sense. Um, obviously if you can be more specific, uh, and nail down, you know, not only am I in real estate, but I'm in commercial real estate. And as y'all know, the riches and the niches and so forth that allows you to develop and curate a content feed that follows, you know, that title, that label. So from a very high level, this is just, you know, currently where I, uh, reside, if you will. And it describes who I am today. So, yeah, I, I, that's kind of why I wanted to have you on was um, I know you use LinkedIn a lot um, in, yes, your, in, in your various roles. And, and specifically, you you probably know a lot about optimizing your profile, uh, but the stuff and we'll talk about that for a minute. But I know you put a good amount of content on LinkedIn and you also do a lot of manual reach out, right, to, to get to mm -hmm. decision makers. Um, and I, I thought do. I thought that stuff might be useful to the real estate pros watching this year. I don't think it's something people do, but if you think about in your local market on LinkedIn, there's probably a lot of financially qualified people who you could do, you could, you could help buy or sell real estate, just hanging out there on LinkedIn. Um, is, is yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'll see, uh, the orange button on the right that says in that's a premium profile. Uh, that's something I invest in. It's a $99 a month uh, premium uh, to, to have that badge. Um, that allows me to pay attention to a couple of things. Like if people are reviewing my profile and checking me out, uh, or it allows me to engage with people who are maybe second tier connections or third tier connections and things like that. So it's really the difference between being able to reach out to people that are in the same group as you and not um, intruding on their space. That allows you uh, a function they call in mail, which is some like a direct message you can send to them and say, you probably have seen, a, uh, you've received a whole litany of these, but hey, I'm Ryan Hartman and I'm in real estate and I'm interested in talking to you. Um, it allows you those sorts of messages. I think uh, the premium feature gives you, gives me anyway, I have a legacy uh, product, like 90 outreaches a month. And okay. uh, a lot of people I know prefer sales navigator, $79, give or take. Is and that I think that one? allows you like, that yeah this is the new one they've rolled the two together so this is the new in messages that you get through sales navigator apparently gotcha so so it is it is a little pricey um mm -hmm. but if but if you're reaching out and i guess in the real estate example i know you're you were selling high-end software uh up till recently right um where the yeah right. your size is pretty healthy um right if, if you're an agent and you're i guess every commission we do as agents is pretty pretty juicy. So the 64.99 or 79 shouldn't be that scary. But specifically, if you're if you're focused on investors, commercial, or you're looking for a luxury relocation, and your average deal size is going to be, you know, you're doing 500 to a million dollar deals every time, it, it doesn't feel that bad. Um, yeah. yeah, it seems, I mean, it seems reasonable. So a transaction size for me would be a, a couple hundred thousand dollar uh, package. And, you know, maybe there'd be a 10 or 20% commission in there whether I was selling it direct or selling as a reseller, that's pretty typical like SaaS uh, compensation. So yeah. uh, probably not dissimilar to commercial properties or larger, uh, larger properties. So if you feel like your people are hanging out there and, and you can find the kind of people you're looking for, then yeah, that, that level of investment certainly makes sense. So I think what I would do first is maybe troll, um, look through the groups and see what kind of groups are being offered. So if you go in there and search groups, you're basically saying what, what pool of audiences are, are, are 
you know, or which audiences are pulling together and what are they talking about? So if there was a, you know, real estate management group, you know, people that share best practices about maintaining properties, uh, you'll probably find some of those uh, commercial investment uh, properties. I know for the SaaS companies, there's a lot of like uh, angels and investors and people who are investing in SaaS companies. So I tend to hang out there quite a bit. So how would I search for groups that are real estate related? I don't think I've ever done that. Uh, yeah. So if you go back to go, click on LinkedIn and go back to the main, uh, go back to the main page rather than my profile. And then um, you'll see down the left hand side, um, there's Gary V. Gary V is probably talking about something fascinating today. There you go. You've got groups or you can go up to the search box up on the top and just start keying in something high level you're looking for, like commercial real estate or real estate investments or there we go. Real estate investing. I think what you're trying to figure out is, are your people in here? What's to be gleaned from this group? Are you learning from them in terms of best practices or are there buyers, uh, you know, somewhere hanging out here? So if you did, so the, the issue we're going to have that you don't have is in a local real estate market, I could search a group, but how would I find people in that group who are in my market? Um, uh, there are some filters and I'd have to play with it a little bit to remember exactly how to do that, but you can start filtering down groups. This gives you very high level stuff. And then of course there's an algorithm that will continue to dish uh, new things up to you. Um, there is a way um, I'll have to play, but you can filter it down and you can look like sort of uh, you know, uh, you're, you're not really looking for groups. The groups can reside anywhere because they're online, but you're looking for connections within a certain state. So you could say, I want, uh, you know, real estate, commercial real estate investments from New Jersey and the, you know. So I would just use the search box and then add extra filters. I believe so. Yeah. So uh, all filters look like this is the far right. All filters, if you've got the jobs groups. Uh, but that might not be filters within groups. There we go. That looks like gotcha. we're getting somewhere. Yeah. Or something like that. So that helps you narrow in. It gets that location base a little more targeted. Yep. Another thing that's coming to mind for me is that uh, a lot of the people watching us do recruit or, or do agent attraction to bring people into their company. Um, so mm -hmm. definitely, I'm seeing right away here that you can target real estate agents and quickly find those on LinkedIn. Um, but say you wanted to find people who are making even a certain amount plus, I guess I'm searching people, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. And then I would do greater Tampa area. I think it knows this because I live, that's where I live. So it's automatically giving me those locations. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can search agents who work at specific companies. But if you didn't want to search agents, you're going direct to consumer with a relocation offer. I'm sure you can search companies. So I could do... Um, oh, what's a big company in Tampa? <laughs> Valpac, right? Yeah, absolutely. So if I wanted to search for executives at Valpac in Tampa, I could either search my first connections or just anybody and show the results. That's correct. And then you have the ability, as you were saying, I think a lot of people know this, Kevin, but I wanted to hear your perspective. How would you proceed? Now, now we've got some targets, right? Mm-hmm. What kind of reach out would you do? Say you paid for the sales navigator and you can message and do the in-mail. Um, yeah, well, a couple of things. First off, I'd probably, like you'd probably say with any uh, landing page or squeeze page, you'd make sure the message is right on the page. So not only am I keeping track of what I've done in the past, but I'm also curating it and getting rid of the stuff that's no longer relevant. So just as recently as last week, I, I killed off a couple of jobs or tasks that were probably no longer relevant and would actually confuse people if they showed up in my stream. So you I think cleaned up your profile? Is, yeah, it's clean up the profile, do a little housekeeping, just make sure it's relevant to what you're offering today, especially if you've got some niches that you're going after. Um, you know, make sure the niche is really, uh, uh, probably you want to spend a minute or two to get a couple of posts out there. Okay. Um, share some content that's super relevant. Like if you're a, you know, foreclosure specialist and get some information out there about interest rates and foreclosures and, you know, lending policies or what have you. Load it up with just a few things so it looks the part. And uh, that would be my property. Yeah, I my love take. that. That's really mm -hmm. practical. So I'm gonna, I'm sorry to interrupt, but no, and you don't have any context on this, but we have with our websites, we have the ability to post properties and lists of properties. Um, Perfect. So what Kevin's kind of saying, as I translate this to real estate, is I would probably go to my website and build out a few squeeze links. Um, so let's go into KV Core really quickly. 
You're gonna get a tour of KV core real quick, Kevin. Um, Love it. Do I need to avert my eyes or anything? Are we good? No, no, it's all it's all clean. Okay. All right. So uh, so let's just say what Kevin just said is we need some content on our profile. So when we reach out to these people, it's relevant to what we're doing. So in this example, I'm gonna just say that we're trying to find uh, luxury buyers just to keep it general. Um, so I might come in here and I'll say, hey, uh, let's do single family homes uh, priced over million bucks in the county. I'm just kind of doing as quick as a as an example. Um, cover. I'll select my cover photo and I'll get a link here. And then I'll make sure that before I start this reach out, I've got like a piece of content or two. So um, quick current look at all uh, 1 million plus homes in Pinellas County. Right. So kind of doing this quickly, it should give me an image preview. So Kevin, this would be an example of kind of that kind oh, fantastic. of fantastic. Yeah. Yes. And then maybe I take a second and I go luxury design ideas or something. I go find like an article out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm just doing this quick for demos pur purposes. And then maybe I'll post this and make a little comment about. Mm -hmm. uh, it's taking a second to load for some reason. This is great. I love that you have the ability to do this and that you're doing this so quickly in real time. Yeah, yeah. I so think, our, uh, go ahead. Yeah, the, to post the, the home listings is very easy for us with KV Core. You can, you can post any specific property or a list of properties really easy. Um, some luxury room design ideas. So this is a third party site that I'm posting some curated content from. I've seen you do that a lot too, right, Kevin? You'll, you'll grab Correct. an article. Yeah. So uh, for argument, so let's just say we took that step. We're not, we haven't reached out yet. I think your advice is really spot on there. So if we start emailing people and they come here like, oh, this guy is about luxury real estate. So the thing he's reaching out about makes sense. Yep. All right. Hey, one other thing that's maybe a little bit of a hack, but you've got a stationary profile pick up there. And mm -hmm. for a select number of people, the people who click the button that says, I want, I'm willing to be a curator, you click the curator button on and you can actually apply to get a video in there. So you get like a, a little uh, 15 or 10 second gift or something like that. And ah. you can actually turn that into a video. Now it's, they have to be kind of, you have to apply for it. Not everybody gets it. Sometimes it takes a minute, but if you're in a feed where people are scrolling through and they're looking at a number of different realtors in a given area, and you know, you're, it's all profile pics and thumbnails, you sure would want to be the one that has a little something happening and stand out from the pack if you can. How do I get um, that? <laughs> uh, so I'm trying to remember that too. You basically, um, you're gonna make me put my readers on to, to read this. Um, <laughs> make it bigger I think it, yeah, I think you have to go, <laughs> it's okay. I think if you go to the edit there, the uh, pencil on the right, uh, yeah, I think it's that one. I think you click on there and it says curate. Uh, no, that's not the one. So maybe it's your profile pick. Actually click on your profile pic. Okay. And, and we can figure this out later if we need to. Let's see. That's not that. Yeah, we'll have to. Uh, I'll, I just did it within the last week. So I'll, I'll look at it, remember, and then you can post that back out there. Yeah. But uh, there you go. Yeah, but once you turn that on, then it'll allow you to um, uh, apply for that. And basically what that does is makes your content stick out a little more because your profile sticks out a little more. Exactly. Some of the e other easy buttons are, you know, there's the circle, you know, if you add your pronouns or if you, the circle around the badge, if you say either we're hiring or, some, you know, I think there's three or four sort of default options. Well, that wait, color wait. also... The, the, yeah, yeah, good, good. You're giving this is the tactical stuff we, we like to do on these sessions. So I'm going to mm -hmm. slow you down. So what was that yeah. thing in the profile image? In the profile like, image. Mm -hmm. And I think it's under edit also. Um, you um, it's not that one, but if you pull back out of that, and I think if you it's where you go to edit your your whole profile. So uh, you can you can X out of that one. Okay. Um, <laughs> is it? Top right is probably just banner, but I think we want to get into where we're editing the entire page uh, where you're not viewing it. Let's see here. So there's, you, uh, there's three or four circles that you, that are default circles that you're allowed to use to surround your profile pick. 
as okay. well as incorporate video into the pick. And the current ones are, you know, now hiring or um, new business, or I think there's a, a third one and it'll change those periodically. Um, and I think when with in Pride Month, they had a, a certain color code and they allowed you to add pronouns to your to your name and uh, underneath your name and things like that. So uh, we definitely want to take advantage of those little hacks and just see if you can't just get a little bit extra pop out of it for sure. Gotcha. Um, another another hack I've used over the years on Facebook, you, we could put a text code or a URL up in the, the image up here, right? Those are really powerful. Absolutely. Yeah. Those are really powerful. So guys, we would do like we would do like text uh, luxury list to cell number to see all million dollar homes in Tampa, Florida right now, something like that. Mm -hmm. How is this so far, guys? I haven't seen any feedback from everybody watching. I'm just hoping you guys can all hear us and Kevin and I just aren't talking to ourselves, but um, we've been on mute the whole time. Yeah. So but but again, I thought it would be useful to have somebody not in real estate. Um, and I'm going to ask you for some some tips and your ideas about how a realtor would use this as we go, Kevin. Um, but absolutely somebody who uses LinkedIn a lot. So those, that's good so far. The little circle highlights, putting little calls to action here. Make sure that your profile has, that your stream of content has some stuff relevant to what you're going to be reaching out about, right? Absolutely. Um, Get rid of the things that don't matter anymore. If you're a barista at Starbucks in your youth, I mean, you can probably lose that now and just kind of keep it tight, keep it short. It's just like a lot of things people don't want to read down necessarily and you know, keep it sort of high, high easily, but easily readable. Yep. Um, and eliminate boxes that aren't, aren't relevant. Just white space is your friend, like any other, uh, you know, web design thing, uh, things like that, where you've got, uh, like cutting edge tech or new ideas or thinking out of the box, people get fascinated by that. So a couple of hacks or tricks, I would join all the groups, like the significant groups that are relevant, make okay. sure you're in the big groups in your space. So if it's, again, I'm sorry, I don't know them all, but commercial real estate or, you know, real estate investors fund or whatever those things are, um, angels for real estate, uh, get in those groups because what it'll do is it'll narrow the margin of, of, um, of connection. So, you know, I might be three or four steps removed from somebody, but when I'm inside of a group with them, all of a sudden I've got the ability to reach out to them. Uh, there's some rules here. You're not supposed to reach out to people that you don't know, but groups can count as knowing them, right? So, as long as you're doing it professionally with a with an in mail or some kind of a like professional outreach like that, uh, you can also follow people, and uh, that's a more that's a gentler way of saying, "Hey, I'm listening. I'm paying attention to what you're doing." It's kind of like saying, "I like what you have to say." Um, at some point after you've been following somebody for a while, you might actually reach to them and ask for that connection or that link. Now, what I think is interesting about the link is most people just have their connections out there. And, you know, if you want to see who they know and their connections are turned on, you can just simply read through it. Now, if you happen to be a good friend of that person, if I was in Ryan's connections and right. Ryan knew somebody who I've been wanting to know, now they're only two steps away from me because of my relationship with Ryan, I can send that person a note and I, on, a, on an in message, I don't have to friend them yet. Uh, I can just say, Ryan and I are good friends. We think a lot alike. And I can see by your feed, we have a lot in common. Would you be open to being in my connection? You start bridging that gap and uh, it, may, it just brings the world a lot closer to you. And, and um, you know, you can friend up with these folks. Can we show that process? So, so joining groups is a good way to get more people who are like first level connections. Is that kind of what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So <laughs> it looks like you've got some groups up here. Um, so you can apply. Um, looks like you can apply. Is this group here? This, this is showing me jobs for some reason. Let me yeah, see. This is jobs. I got you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you go over to group. Yeah. There you go. Groups. Yeah. So just the real estate investing group on top, if you're not already in it, you click on that one. And obviously they usually stack rank them in a descending order with the most prominent or prolific groups. I think I noticed there was like 20 some odd thousand people there. Um, and so I have here's all your. Yep. Yeah. These are all my friends who are already in these, this group, right? Yep. Your firsts are lined up on top and depending on setting some groups, you won't see past what's on top, but You've got your friends that are on top here, and uh, and then eventually you'll start scrolling into your uh, secondaries and tertiary connections and so forth. And um, it looks like the settings here are only going to show you first because you've run out of runway. So right. there's uh, 79 connections, right? But there's, you know, uh, this particular one. Oh, there's only 79 in the group. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There's 20,000 members. Right. So once you're, you know, accepted into it, that's just showing you at a glance who's already in there. Right. So, um, 
what you know, what you want to remember there is if you enter the group, let's say it's instantaneous, this one you have to request and you may have to wait for an administrator to let you in. It's all fine. But those 79 people are significant because the moment you're entered into that space, you can start chatting with them in that real estate, in that space, you can have dialogue with them and it's there for everybody to read that's a part of the group. So even though I don't know the other 20 some odd thousand people, I can have a dialogue with the people that I do know and I'll kind of chat with them in that sandbox and uh, other people will get to see what I'm commenting on and what I'm posting. So now if you want to add some relevant conversation there, just make absolutely sure it's valuable to all the people that are in the group. It doesn't feel like predatory or, uh, you know, just solely about your stuff. Uh, a lot of groups will have um, policies or rules, you know, probably want to read up on the rules when you get there around what solicitation or promotions are allowed. Uh, a lot of times, especially the more professional they are, they're really just um, uh, best practices being discussed kind of anonymously or agnostic. Okay. So, so use the group, post content to the group, and then can you, you can reach out to the people who are in the group? Correct. Or... Correct. So and I... if you want to have a public conversation with some of your friends that you know are already in the group, that's a great way to do it. And the way I might do that is um, if I had something to say about digital best practices, because that's my space, and I know Ryan, you know, in a parallel universe over here, he's doing similar things. And I, we were in the same group together on digital marketing experts. I might go in there and post something, tag Ryan in it, say, does this experience sound familiar, Ryan? And then all of a sudden it pops up in Ryan's feed. Ryan and I have a dialogue. Maybe he throws an image back on top. He's taking my cue to jump in on this conversation. And we're piling up valuable content on the same topic in front of 20,000 people that are known to be valuable to us. So find the valuable group first, first clean up the, you know, the profile, then find the valuable groups, then add content in the groups and have dialogue with people that you know in that same group is a, is a really wonderful, is a really wonderful play. How, have you ever created your own group as a way to, to kind of control the conversation? Or? I have. Um, I have. I tend not to. Um, the ones that I have, I, uh, I started and handed off. I find the uh, administration of the group uh, a little tedious. Um, you know, for a well, you've probably been involved in like in a Facebook group, Facebook groups and things like that, that, yeah. you know, managing content and, you know, slapping people's hands and doing these kinds of things. It's, I'm just not really not wired for that. Um, I pick the groups that have the, the vibe that I want and I spend time there, but I, I probably spin up more pages than groups. I've spent up a lot of pages, but so um, groups, you kind of have to be the ringleader or you want to be. Cool. So I, I, there might be some opportunity if you're doing like a local, you can do a group as like Tampa, Florida, real estate investments. Um, I can see some yeah. advantage for running that, but you might be setting up as Kevin said, you might be setting yourself up for a little bit of work. Um, but people in your area who are looking and are in real estate might, might be prone to join those like they're doing it. Well, what's great about that, I'm really glad you brought it up because I hadn't thought about it that way. Um, if you want to put the flag in the ground and try to get people to come to you, as if you're saying, hey, Tampa, let's have an investment group, then um, you can send that invitation out to people much more easily than you can. It's much easier than inviting a third, somebody who's like three levels removed from you. You're not supposed to do that. But if you have a group that's in real estate and this is a known real estate person, you know, hey, maybe you'd like to join my group where we're going to talk about real estate in Tampa. That's a that's a much a very legit uh, way to, again, pull people towards you. Is is the content posted to a group more likely to show up in the feed of the. Um, you know, if I'm scrolling through my LinkedIn feed, am I going to see the group stuff more likely or will I just see anything anybody's posting because LinkedIn's not as competitive as Facebook? Uh, it's not as competitive, but you will see you will see uh, mostly like like Facebook, the things you engage with or the people who are more verbal who are who are being engaged with. So if you're in a group, it's definitely part of the algorithm and it does show up. Um, I would say on, on the digital marketing side of my group list, uh, I would there's probably 10 groups that I might get a daily post. Or I get a daily notification that some tr thing is trending in this group. And it'll ask me if I want to comment on it as either myself or my company, the catapult.io. It'll ask me, or I have equipment site, which is an equipment uh, uh, sales uh, page. 
So it'll ask me, depending on which group I'm in, if I want to comment as either myself or that page. So I have always find that interesting too. Um, equipment site, it might be like if somebody's selling used things, used machinery or something like that, or, you know, that's how I'll get those notifications. Right. So you can interact as, as the sort of entity that you want us to get the engagement. Absolutely. I also, oftentimes I'll post at, on the page of the entity. So if I was Kevin's real estate and I'm also Kevin Sabrin, so, and I have the page and I have the profile pic. So I might go into my page and say, I have this fantastic new listing. It's waterfront. It's got a dock and you know, it's blah, 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 uh, three stories and amazing. Um, I might post that out there. And then usually when I pay it post through the, the company, it'll ask me, do you want to follow up with reposting this on your personal page? And I always do that. So what it'll show up in the algorithm as I get the default credit of one person already sharing it. So even though it's me and I'm sharing my own, it does impact the algorithm and it does give me a little boost. Um, and then if somebody else likes it or reposts it, I'm just getting credit on top of credit. So it, it helps to start it that way. The downside to it is it's a post within a post. So when you know Ryan makes a post and the thanks post is beautiful, right? Or the IRE post is beautiful. And then um, it, it collapses down to about two thirds size inside of his post. So what he has to say is up here that you, you lose a little bit of uh, mile, you lose some, some shrinkage in the photo, but okay. it's okay. But you still get the dual branding, so. Got it. So, so it makes sense here. So it can make sense to post to your LinkedIn page and then your personal. And I assume I, I have a page here for thanks that I don't have one for the real estate. I assume it's very similar to, to business pages on Facebook, right? It's very, yeah, pretty yeah. similar. You can also X out of the photo. So like that photo there, you've got a terrific logo on thanks. It's just a little small. It's great because the red pops on the white space, but huh. when it gets shrunk down, now it's a little tiny. So sometimes I'll X out of that photo and I'll take my own screenshot so right. I can bring it back up to a larger size. And it balances that aspect ratio a little bit of uh, page within a page. Cool. I, we, we're, I wanna stay on focus here. One thing that um, I think might be really useful for people to see is the process of reaching out to somebody now. Like, like what mm -hmm. script would I use? Um, I'm gonna stick with this example of a luxury listing, right? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. I'm just going to search for you and just send you an example. Uh, and I'm hoping maybe not to put you on the spot too much, but maybe you can help me script yeah. out like an appropriate reach out. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to pretend that Kevin was just somebody I, I met in a group or they were a connection of a connection. They look like somebody who is in my local market. Maybe I can see their job title is, you know, EVP of sales or something. And, it, you know, they're, they're the kind of prospect I want in my real estate database. Um, mm -hmm. so I'm going to message here and I, I can do something like, yo, you want to buy a house? That's how you do it, right? Right. Pretty close. <laughs> what would you do? Because I get lots of in-mails here and a lot of them are just so boring over on the right side. Um, please don't, please don't send me, do you have five minutes for a quick chat? Right. Because I think that must be like a default setting anymore. And it's the, uh, the easy button. So it always makes me feel good when somebody's run, read the, uh, read the bio. Okay. If I put energy into the page, it did, you know, I like to personalize it as much as that's hard for us doing the sending. What's important about this, this guy, that's what's about important about this, Kevin, you know, I'd be trying to be as interesting as possible in as few words as possible. Hey, Kevin, love your profile pic. I literally owned a boat that had that exact same view for four years, you know, okay. and uh, we, we, you know, I see that we're both very active in uh, Tampa Bay real estate investment group. And uh, I'd like to pick your brain or I'd like to, what's the ask? There's gotta be an ask, you know? Okay. Um, can I share my white paper? Can I, can we, a friend? A lot of times, and believe it or not, it's uh, if I'm asking people just to be networked, I will say, can I, um, I, I, I basically wanna communicate to them. I know who you are. Like I see you, I'm, I read your stuff. I know who you are. Yep. I'd be honored if you're in my group. And I, and I don't wanna just ask. It's not just about the take. It's gotta be about the give to. Can I uh, learn, share, and connect or something like that? And um, uh, probably 60% success rate on those invitations, maybe even a little bit higher. So there was a day when I was just flinging the, do you have five minutes for a chat in my youth? And, and uh, I've learned to not do that. So offer something useful. And I'm going to show you guys an example of one of the first in-mail messages. The last one I have from Tracy Foster at the top right that I actually thought 
made, made sense. So it, it goes in line with what you're saying. So I'm going to do Kevin mm-hmm. cool profile pick. I had a boat like that for years. Um, I, I maintain, uh, I regularly do videos, uh, and write-ups on interesting, interesting luxury properties in the TV, TV area. Would it be, okay? I love that. Would it be okay if I, if I sent you, sent you, um, the video from time to time, would that be all right? That'd or be enough. That- that's okay. that's a good start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, so go ahead. You no, know, I was just thinking through, uh, and I stopped because it was. Uh, I got your uh, this just popped up on my LinkedIn feed, which I thought was cool, and I had a competing thought, um, and it threw me off. Um, I recently recorded a video. Uh, I'd love to show you a sales tactic I use where I incorporate real properties and quick videos or something like that. Would you like to see one that I recorded in a nearby area or something like local relevance? Uh, you know, as as much as you can keep it relevant and and not feel not not have it feel predatory to that person. Um, but you're you're on it. It's it's really close what you're doing right there. Or, or some kind of lead magnet, like I yeah okay. Uh, every week I pick the top top three luxury deals in Tampa Bay and I send an email out. Would you like to see the latest? Yeah, w- <laughs> exactly. Would that be of value to you? Okay. Um, so. Yeah, th- that's perfect. You're I'd being be very weekly. transparent. If you're going to ask right away with fewer words, the more transparent you can be, the better it is. You know, <laughs> this is what I do. Would it be of any value? Or I hate to ask questions that are going to end in a, you give them a chance to say no. Um, certainly some of them are going to be valuable. Um, how often would you be interested in this feed? How often would you like to hear from me? Um, you know, so if you, anytime you can, oops, sorry, I think I lost my earbuds. You still hear me okay? I can hear you. So everybody watching, you can see I'm doing this down at the bottom right. I realize it might be small, but basically you're offering something of value while Kevin gets his his deal there. Um, let me show you guys uh, since I teased it. Well, I guess I, don't, I thought this was great. Right? I, yeah, I can hear you now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go off your buds. Okay, so I thought this was really good, and it looks and this is done by Salesforce. Um, but I actually wanted to download the report. I think this was done through the. Um, paid sponsored ad platform, but you can see she did very much kind of what Kevin was talking about, where she's offering something that can be downloaded um, directly in the message right here. So you there, Kevin? So translating that to, (laughs) can you hear me? Seems like LinkedIn might be going going a little haywire, guys. But tr- translating this to real estate, I mean, I think property lists are going to be our friend. You know, if you have any webinar recordings that you've done, all the stuff we talk about regularly, uh, be something good to dangle as a as a kind of one on one message. Any content you have. Yeah, I like that a lot. The fact you can generate a property list or uh, um, new listings, if you know, taking advantage of that urgency. I don't know what everybody else is experiencing right now, but uh, those of us in Florida are certainly feeling the pain of short inventory. So immediacy and urgency is your friend. Um, yeah. And, you know, we, I wish we all had more opportunity for sense of urgency and you've got it. You, I mean, you've got the MLS, you can spit the listing out and you know when things come out. So uh, I think that's a very actionable item. Matter of fact, I had somebody show up in my feed who I don't know. Um, I ended up accepting the invite because she's really on top of her game and she's in real estate. I was just going to see if I could find it because it's every day. It's the, it's the go to work plan. Here's my mission today. Here's what I'm doing today. She hooked me as a follower and I'm not even buying real estate right now. Right. Yeah. It'd be cool. That would be cool to see how, how an agent is doing that. Another guy, uh, I have a friend, uh, Kevin, I don't know if you've ever met him, uh, Andrew Robinson, who's been on one of these sessions in the past. He does luxury real estate and he, you guys definitely want to check out his profile. He does tons of content basically all the time, uh, probably every day. He's got something related to his market being posted to the wall. And sometimes it's just that simple, right? Um, yeah. Consistent. Repetition. Yeah. Uh, Repetition is your friend. This, uh, you and I both know uh, Mike Weiss and uh, what I was quite impressed with when he uh, first reached out was the level of sophistication he put into a video that was right on tar- right on uh, with something I was very interested in. And it's all about LinkedIn and cloud selling. And uh, so this is very relevant because, huh. you know, Mike's all over this game. 
Um, but he's, you know, like, you'll notice, okay, he's got a ring around his image, his uh, profile pic. Um, uh, the Gary, orange ring? The orange ring, that's one of the options available. Okay. Uh, Gary V, if you notice, Gary V had his uh, text me at right on his uh, banner. Okay. Uh, you know, and this is a, you know, obviously he's a player and an influencer, but there you go. Five time best selling, just, just text me. Little things like that, uh, accessibility, transparency, they make a big difference. Yeah, this text me, I've, I've from time to time, I think I just took it off, use that uh, text codes, you know, text the word such and such to this number to get something. Um, so, and we have a text response code tool built in the KB Core guys that you could do that in your profile. So um, mm -hmm. definitely a good one. And, and if, if Gary Vee's doing it, then, then it has to be good. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's probably, that's probably <laughs> accurate. The other thing is using we language, um, you know, it's more of a copywriting twick trick, but instead of I, and I'm a solo uh, person out here doing my thing, you know, contact us and we will, you know, my team will, even if you're an associate and you're with a broker, it's still, you can still, my team, it's still a team, right? So like there's power behind the effort. Uh, there's a, a team behind the, the, uh, the face um, and we're there for you and we got your back and we'll get this information to you promptly. Um, those kind of things uh, instill trust and yeah, make the whole enterprise just feel more um, sort of uh, stable and and uh, trustworthy. And it's just okay. subtle. It's just copyright, like we. For for so so something like our team regularly searches the MLS for awesome uh, properties. Yep. Nellis, Nellis area. Would it be okay if we sent you right. our weekly deals list or something like that? Exactly. Okay. So yeah, I, have like a, I have a question for you. Um, you know, we've been, we always uh, kick best practices around and we had this idea about used, uh, used things, cars or equipment or whatever. What's the story with appraisals? And like, I know people up and down my street are selling right now. Is that a part of this hook in any way, shape or form? Like, do you know, I, I don't actually know what my house is worth. I just know it went up approximately 10% in the last 13 months, according to yeah. a thing. I read, right. So, uh, is that part of this? Like, do you you're, know what your home is worth? And do people start that conversation? You're, you're hitting a really good idea here, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it. Because, um, you know, find the value of your house or request a free report is probably the most common seller lead uh, hook in real estate. We have products at, at Inside Real Estate to do that. But the idea, actually, of reaching out through, through, through LinkedIn, um, and you guys just heard Kevin say that. He's not in real estate, but he's, <laughs> he might actually respond to that uh, if I offered you a home valuation. So. But that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so hi, Kevin. Uh, our team. Uh, you know, so the, the real estate market, state market is very hot right now, as you probably know, right? So as you probably know, very hot right now. Uh, our team, our team, and we have this thing called Core Present, Kevin, that some people listening might have, but our team, uh, has the ability to create a very detailed uh, 20 plus page report that'll show you what a buyer might pay for your property in today's market. Would you be interested in seeing this report for your house? I think, I mean, is this, and you correct me, like, is this too pushy or too pitchy? I think, again, if, you, if you're going to go straight for it, just be really transparent that that's what you're doing. Like, no, nobody wants to be like be slid up on and, you know, that kind of thing. So I, I like it personally. I like it a lot. It's either relevant or it's not. It's going to play that this one plays to your general audience. It's just somebody with a house that might want to flip. The other ones are a little bit more targeted play. Like you're an either an institutional investor or a, uh, you know, uh, you're managing a fund of some sort, and we're going to do this dance together again and again and again. That's more of a relationship ask, right? Yeah. Where this is just more of a transactional ask. So are you in or out? Would it make sense for you now? I, I'm okay with it in this instance. Yeah. So so the bleeding, the, the knife in the neck of most of the people watching us right now in this current market is, is we're all starved for listings. Um, so this sort of reach out right here, yeah. If you could do it in a way that doesn't, you're going to get some people just ignore you. Mostly they're going to ignore you, right? You're, right. you're going to hear crickets. Is that, I think that's probably right. 
Yeah, you gotta um, develop some thick skin on that. Yeah, you, most people will. I mean, but if you, but I mean, if you could do ten of these a day and get a one, uh, one person to reply back and say, sure, why not? And how long would it take you to do some research and find ten people to send this to in your market? Um, Kevin, do you want to talk about that? You probably dedicate yeah. a certain amount of time on a regular basis to this kind of prospecting. So, like, uh, I'm going to answer it with a with a different side thing because. Mm -hmm. If I were to take what you just wrote as a message and turn it into a post or a, I call it a light article, you could simply say, speak from a, from an expertise standpoint, like I'm a realtor, I'm in this market and I'm noticing a trend. Okay. And the trend that you're about to share with a group of people is that, um, you know, uh, most people weren't aware that their asset had appreciated in value a significant amount. And that it was a good time to roll out of that asset and into something that they wanted. Um, and you could then pose a question to a, a different group and say, are you all experiencing this in this space? You've really demonstrated expertise around real estate and you've planted a nugget in their brain that assets increased in value during COVID times for somewhat inexplicable reasons. And now might be a good time to level up and take advantage of that opportunity. But you're doing it in a legit way. You're saying, have you folks in the equipment industry experienced that? Or have you folks in the SaaS industry experienced that? Like what's going on in, with your assets in your industry? And you just want to get that conversation started, but you're doing it from a, a expertise standpoint, right? And the reason you can get away with that is like everybody owns a house or everybody's in a house, right? It doesn't necessarily work for enterprise software for me. I can't just go have a convo about right. that everywhere and have that make sense. So I didn't mean to derail it, but I, but that's where you can repurpose the content that you just put in the message and roll it up to a post or even roll it up to like a white paper uh, because either one of those makes a lot of sense. So if you, so you're saying also create the content related to this idea. Uh, I, I think I, I think I would. And yeah. you, there's two ways gang, you can go bottom up or top down. If you find a post, get some traction get some energy, spend a little bit more time and, and flesh that out a little bit. Like, now go do, go do some research and say, you know, I'm, I'm in Gulfport, Florida here. So what is Pinellas County doing right now? I find a stat with a cool picture. I now create a post uh, around trending. Uh, I maybe give it a source. And now I've got like a great post. Is there more to say around that? Because then I can turn that into a downloadable white paper and I can take other people's work as long as I like tag it right and roll it into like one pager and say um, data points around Pinellas County are all reporting to this thing that's happening and you're the voice of that same thing. That's a bottom up play, started so with a comma. So you're, we've got a shortcut. So every page, Kevin, in, in our KV course sites, there's an areas stats page like this. Ah, nice, about, okay. About values, taxes, the average prices. Yep. So everybody watching can just go to that area page and just post it to LinkedIn. I, with gotcha. a little paragraph, you know, say, hey, here's your weekly uh, 33707 for Gulfport, Florida market update. Um, the average price was, and then just post a link to this. Yep. So, and yeah, what I you're saying, love, love that. Yeah. And what you're saying is true too. I just know that a lot of people are pressed for time to create a lot of the original content. So we have these, you know, we get, we have these little tools built, baked in that can just be copied and pasted. Um, Boy, that's, that's really great. Yeah. Um, so this message, I'm, I'm going to stay focused here because I really want some listings, right? I'm, I'm kind of kidding. I don't, but I know everybody watching does, right? So if I, if I were to say, hey, this is my, I want to try to get a listing from this. What do I need to do? Do I need to plan a certain time a day for an hour where I'm going to commit and I'm going to send 20 emails a day for five days and get a hundred yeah. of these out to know so how many do I need to send to know if it's going to work? Uh, 20, 20 is probably a, a decent uh, sample size. Uh, 50 is better. And if you talk to anybody in a call center environment, they're going to use the term power hours. Power hours, if your customers are awake, you have to be available to them when they're ready for you. So in real estate, I know is different because a lot of times you're either early and late around people's working hours. So you might be in the center of the day creating content like this. For me, uh, I let people get settled into their office. And if I'm talking to them, it's between about 9 and 1130. And then there's a lot, kind of a lunch lull. And then there's a mid-afternoon. I save that time for engagement on the phone for myself and I do creative stuff after hours. Okay. I can usually determine, but, but call it your power hours and your power hours are your most valuable thing you can be doing is talking to the people who want, who want what you have. 
So if they're available, you need to be available, right? And then do this stuff in the off time is, is sort of like my model. Um, and 20 is enough, 50 is better. And, uh, you know, 50 takes more time. If you copy paste the bulk of it, but find that unique nugget, um, Gary V, you're a brave soul to post a text number on your, uh, on your, uh, on your uh, banner. Right. I've always uh, admired that about you and your sort of, um, you know, your sort of bold or fearless approach to marketing. Uh, now, what I'm here for is blankety blankety blank. So you're saying try to try to not go if you if possible not go super cold like this. Try to establish some kind of common ground or some kind of I would, yes proof that it's not just you just dropping copying and pasting a message in every time. A bridge sentence, a transitional or bridge sentence that adds some level of connectivity that pulls something that you either know or glean from this person, and be be okay with being a little bit bold there. Um, maybe even bolder than you'd normally be. It's really the only thing that's going to stand. So can I do something? Looks like maybe you live in St. Pete. Which 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 neighborhood? Yeah. Uh, so could I just start with that? Wait for you to reply and then drop the rest of my. <laughs> yeah. Work, work the rest yeah. of my thing is try to generate the conversation first, right? Absolutely. If they're just completely numb to it, you know, more interesting that first piece is uh, the more likely they're going to engage. It's more of a, I think they call it a breadcrumb approach, but um, is that a soft I, reply? I would probably prefer my personality, well, me personally, rather than feeling like I'm pitching hard. This seems like a good conversation starter. Just where, yeah. where in the, in the location do you live? Um, what mm -hmm. everybody's Kevin, I've never seen, we've got an okay crowd. I haven't heard one comment yet. So I'm like, <laughs> could somebody just say, yeah, guys, I'm tuned in and watching. And if you, if you think you're going to use this approach and you're going to try to get listings by just drumming up conversations and then maybe offering the home valuation the way I just did, or if you have a different idea, let us know. Um, but I've never seen crickets like this before. It could be because I don't have Annalisa or Kelly here and you, and they're, they're just, they're better at a listening response. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Somebody. Replied. I have to fish for it sometimes. Thanks, Gina yeah, Marie. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ed. All right. So, so Kevin, yeah, th this is, really helpful. I, I'm learning a few things. Um, I'm getting a little overexcited about the idea of just spamming people on LinkedIn though, because it, it seems to me that it's a really big pool. Um, you can make the reach outs for free, right? If you're, if you're doing it, if you're putting a little labor in and you're working through connections, you don't need to spend a lot. Um, and then it, you can just buy the in-mails as well, right? Yes. Okay. Um, yep. Buy the in-mails. You can buy extra credits and get extra in-mails. The, the in-mail thing is I can't, I can't express enough. Be interesting. Take your time with it. You can absolutely cut and paste a boilerplate if, as long as you add those things in. I prefer a touch of like uh, transparency or a, a, a give on my side. I'm in Gulfport looking at your last text. What neighborhood are you in? I'm in Gulfport. Are you experiencing the same thing we are done? Did you get impacted with the flooding recently when, the, when uh, Elsa came through? Anything like that that gives it just a touch of connect um, speeds everything up and it makes it worthwhile. It's it's better to slow down and connect for the purposes of moving forward. So at the end of the day, you know, if you try those 50 people, it might be 10 in a regular experiment, or it could be 20 to 25 in a in a successfully crafted, slower moving uh, outreach. So so I'm I'm going to do a little review here. I can just click in the search box, I choose people and I choose my area. And yep. those two basic things just kind of give me other people on LinkedIn where I live. And I typed in real estate, but I didn't even really need that, right? right. Um, now, the next thing I can do, just to reiterate, I can start to drill down by specific companies, I can filter by job title, uh, and maybe get myself a list of a few hundred people who are executives at local companies. Mm -hmm. And then I can simply start, as you said, I'm not going to go to Jose here. Um, it's like he's a realtor. I'm not going to go and just make him a pitch. I'm going to say, hey, uh, Jose, I noticed you're in real estate. How long have you been with Greystone? Something like that. Mm -hmm. Like that mm -hmm. would be a good, like a quick one-liner that just says, hey, how long have you been with the company you're at? Or something like that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And then I'm going to spend an hour. I'm going to block time block on my calendar, maybe a half hour a day or an hour a day. And, and I'm going to commit to this and see if I can get a listing within a week or two. <laughs> it's all numbers and it, it, it is a bit of grinding, but it does, it does, it does pan out. Yeah. Um, in your case, where you're talking to professionals selling real estate, 
and you have a suite of marketing tools, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're all in on this. This is, this is, you know, you want all the Jose Cortices out there uh, mm -hmm. following along to engage, you know, said tools. Um, folks who are looking for the next level down now, you, your uh, realtors and brokers and associates and trying to reach out to the, you know, the buyers and the sellers out there, they, you know, their total addressable market is, is wide. It's really wide. So you have one combo for you, which we can have later, but the, the TAM on that is just ridiculous. Like everybody with a, you know, with real estate um, and you're in a highly volatile time and the content should really reflect that right now that, you know, we've not seen this before. And, and I mean, I'll tell y'all, but interest rates and inventory shortages, and I know about all this stuff and I'm not buying or selling. That's, you're, you're seeing it from the outside. You know, I, I it is very easy uh, for me in particular, and for the other people working inside, it's very easy for us to create content and do LinkedIn outreach to other realtors. It's a big pool, but right. I haven't I haven't seen too many real estate agents do it in a hyper local market really well. Even though all of there's tons of things for us to talk about right now, as you're saying, there's just so many. You know, yeah, the interest rates, the the lack of inventory, all of the MLS, every listing in the MLS, every property search link you can create in KV Core is all an opportunity to share some content. Pay it forward with thought leadership. There's usually like a, a ratio of gives before an ask, right? And like any good marketing funnels or whatever, 10 to one, five to one, whatever you, whatever you settle in on. Um, and that the altitude of those gives can vary. So let's just say you, you say it was, uh, you know, uh, five postings of a piece of property, like a, my daily, my daily post of a property every day, seven, seven a week. And then, um, a Monday and a Friday article about trending in the Bay Area, again, Tampa, and then somewhere in there, an ask, like, here's what I need. And the ask can be a survey, the ask can be fill out a form if you'd like a, an evaluation or you want to get in my opt-in list. I don't know what that ratio is, but it's probably very similar. So um, seven touches a week, uh, let's say four postings. Uh, two value add like trending things and one ask is probably the balance okay. and you can vary the day that you that you land that ask. Um, I don't know how to expect, uh, you know, I'm constantly surprised with how active the weekend is because everybody's off work and they're they're looking. But I've, I've often wondered, how does LinkedIn LinkedIn do on the weekend? And I got to tell you, I don't really see a big drop in numbers on the weekend. I, I actually look at it more on my phone when I'm bored. I'll, I'll like yeah. put the LinkedIn and just scroll through the feed. So that might be why like you're, you're less busy. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I'm making a content creation schedule here. Uh, so what Kevin was just talking about, you know, so you, you could say, Hey, Monday, I'm going to do a local area stats, like one of your area pages Tuesday, you do just whatever the mortgage rates are, any mortgage rules, financing uh, news, uh, Wednesday, you do a property of the day. Thursday, you do a property search of the day. You know, you do a link from KV Core. Uh, Friday, maybe you do the home valuation ask. You just post something that says, hey, we need listings. Uh, if you would like a report to see what your house is worth, you know, something of that nature, that's a direct ask. Uh, post a link to all of this week's open houses on Saturday and maybe take Sunday off. Um, yep. And you yep. could just repeat that over and over, right? Um, yeah, just develop that recipe and then just stay consistent with it. Um, remember that video works better than post. Uh, pictures in a in a post work better than straight text. Uh, picture with you in it. Uh, people engage with people that they see and they see eyeballs. They get drawn to it. So, you know, uh, don't be afraid to stand in front of a place uh, and and shoot a quick video of yourself in front of it and post it out there. The, the point I would make on that though is, what about what I'm saying is important to you? So, if random people are listening, we're just going to call them random people. What about what I'm saying now is going to stop you in your tracks and pay attention? Um, you know, like say you just sold this house and here it is. And I'm, you know, selfieing myself in front of this, you know, what am I, what I'm about to tell you is, is what is important about it? You know, like, uh, you know, prices in this neighborhood spiked uh, 10%, even though the Pinellas County average is only seven, this homeowner moved because of X, Y, Z, and I was able to place it. Of course, you're getting credit for it, which is great, but you're also dropping a trend or a stat in there. It could have been something you read in the morning paper that 7% in Gulfport versus 10 in St. Pete or whatever. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. I would, I would reference Andrew uh, Robinson again, just for some of that. He does a lot of this in-person stuff you're talking about. Um, ask questions. Oh, yeah. You see like hit right here. Yeah. Uh, engaging stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm most excited, Kevin, about the, 
the path you put me on here with just spamming people through in-mail. And, and <laughs> it worked. So, it worked. And you, 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 you've built pretty good uh, business this way personally, right? I, I know that the reason I yeah. actually come on is this is kind of your primary mode of, of networking. So. Yeah, I've collected like six or so, six, some 6,200 or so uh, followers. And I've probably been at it whatever, 15 or whatever years it's been around now. You put them um, in a, you put them in a CRM too, right? I do. Yeah. Right. So that's, that's yeah. another part guys is there's probably a transfer step here. Yeah. I'm currently using Salesforce. I, uh, I love my lookalike audiences for channels that allow that to happen. Uh, so if I, I, no matter where I earned them, I can follow up with them on whatever channel makes the most sense on follow up. So how do you get somebody out of LinkedIn into your CRM? Do you just do some research and or do you ask them um, for an email? That's a great question. It's been a while since I've done that, Ryan, to be completely mm -hmm. honest. And I know there was some exports available. Now with the setting changes, you can see I forgot that the Navigator one uh, kind of overtook what used to be the old premium. And I'm not sure what the options are uh, today. Um, I almost, I don't know what percentage of people I would have their contact info on. Um, I'd say in the last year, I probably picked up about 1500 more contacts. And um, those contacts, I probably don't have a fully baked uh, in, in my CRM. My only means of communicating with them at the moment are through this channel. So uh, peeling them off that channel and then some other mode of engagement, if I don't have their uh, contact info, like a cell phone or an office line or something like that. Uh, honestly, I use like Zoom info and things like that to not Zoom info. Uh, yeah, no, Zoom info. I mm -hmm. use Zoom info to look them up if I can't get it done through LinkedIn, if I need the rest of the contact info. And then there's a decent bridge like, hey, we've been friends for a while on LinkedIn and shared some content. Um, thought this was, you know, I have this case study and it's larger and thought it'd be more appropriate to share it over here. You know, I'll, I'll be bold and take those, take those leaps, use, you know, that bridge. So you, but, but a lot of that work is LinkedIn becomes kind of like a prospect bucket. They're like, you're warm or cold, but you just manually put them in a CRM if, if, if they become like a prospect. Yeah. Until, uh, very clever folks like you show me how to spin them off in funnels and things like that. Well, I know how to scrape. I, there are tools to let you scrape, but that's not so. I have scraped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, but I don't, you know, I've used all that stuff too. It doesn't always get you very far unless you actually had a, a back. It's more valuable to have the back and forth on LinkedIn, I think, and then just move them. If they reply back and say, yes, give me the home value, then they become a lead in, in your KV4 system. Absolutely. You, you don't need to yeah. stress about getting every little interaction into the CRM. Oh, content, wow. content creators and thought leadership, back to the content creator, turn the creator button on, get the little video clip in there. And it actually bumps you in the algorithm that you're somebody who they expect is going to be promoting or talking more regularly. It's not just like people shopping resumes and putting a favorite meme of the week up there. It's actually people like getting after it and creating new content. Ever since the uh, sale a couple of years ago, apparently the algorithm has taken some changes, has taken some hits and they're trying, they're actually LinkedIn. This is looking for uh, more and more valuable content. So there's um, an opportunity. There's an opportunity. It's a, it's a moment in time thing where, uh, and you follow that packing order that uh, video is better than a post and a post of the picture is better than a post and to just text and get your you know photo in there and that kind of thing. Follow that sort of methodology and be a content curator with thought leadership, not just it's okay to like share memes and all that kind of stuff. That's all good, especially the more relevant they are, the better. Um, if people interact with it, it's way better because now you're in thoughtfully promoting intelligent um, content and you're getting engagement. That's, that's, that's wonderful. But if you're the creator of new content and you're getting engagement, that's like the holy grail. And they're gonna, they're gonna bump you up and spread you around the algorithm much faster than people that aren't. So do yourself a favor, turn that button on, try to get that video, put the ring around it, stand out from a crowd and start posting good content. And uh, especially if you follow that cadence that, that Ryan just scripted out or some version that works for you, it, you'll, you'll, you'll get people drawn to you. The outreach thing, get in the groups, make sure you're in the groups, uh, have thoughtful dialogue with people who the, you already know that are in those groups. Um, don't be afraid to pose questions. If you don't know anybody in the group, pose questions. You can pose questions even to the uh, administrators because they're somewhat obligated to respond. And if they don't, somebody who's got their back will respond. And there are already notable people who are important, right? So if Ryan was IRE and I came in and said, hey, Ryan, I'm a 
novice uh, realtor, still wet behind the ears, and I have these questions, and I start asking him. If I don't get Ryan to answer, you know one of his group or one of y'all are going to answer for him. All of a sudden, I have engagement. I have dialogue. Now I have friends. This is fodder for friends. And then I, uh, so let's say uh, I'm looking at your screen. Hannah Williams is on there. And hey, Hannah, thanks for that answer. And now I friend Hannah. And pretty soon, you know, I'm in. So cool. that's that's how that works. Cool. Well, we're hitting up. We're hitting up on an hour. Uh, thank you, Gina Marie. We're getting really good feedback now. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Kevin, you came on with like five minutes notice. So thank you. I was a little lost. <laughs> But I was, I was, I, w I went a little last minute today, guys. I had another topic in mind that we'll do next Tuesday, and I wasn't prepared. And I said, and Kevin and I were talking. I was like, why don't you come on and save me here? And he did. So <laughs> thanks a lot, Kevin. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. It was really fun. All see you, right. gang. We'll get the we'll get the replay live for everybody uh, on the normal channels, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks again, Kevin. See you guys. Bye.